Hi, Brenda Geiger with EatDrinkDive.com, a new website about the whiskey and wonder in the Midwest through travel, food, and drink. So today we're going to be interviewing my brother-in-law who is a whiskey expert and Glenn's going to share with us what drinkware you should have for your whiskey, how to look for the origin and the price point, and how to take your time and, and just enjoy your whiskey. He's got a collection of about $10,000 worth of whiskey in his basement. We're going to taste three of them. So if you're going to drink it, you want to think about the glassware, okay? And it's important if you're going to taste the whiskey, not so much for a highball. Uh, a wine glass is good. A small snifter is good. A Glen Karen nosing glass is good. And you want to stay away from your typical highball glass, okay? Uh, or like I said, a regular wine glass will work. My favorite glass comes from the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, and it's similar to the Glen Karen glass. But as you can see, the rim is quite a bit bigger at the top, okay? Allows me to get my big nose in there, take a breath, smell it, whereas it's a little harder with the nosing glass with the Glen Karen. Okay. This is a big thing, comes from Scotland, Scottish Crystal. They made a huge thing when they introduced it as a way to sample whiskey. Okay. If you don't think it is important, take a whiskey, any whiskey, and pour the same amount in, say, a tumbler and a nosing glass and smell the difference and it's noticeable. Okay, the next thing is let's just let's act like we're gonna taste some whiskey here. <laughs> okay, this is Parker's Heritage is one of my favorites. Hard to find. Great whiskey. This one clocks in. This is 127.8 proof. Typical whiskey. It's got to be 80 proof to be whiskey. That's where most And that of is from are. where? This is a um, uh, Heaven Hill Distillery in Marchdown, Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. Alright, so you can see, or I hope you can see, this is some dark whiskey. It's been aged, heavy charred barrels. You can't add any color to, to bourbon, by the way, and have it be called bourbon. So you sort of give it a swirl. Take a sniff. And when you do it, you want to do it with your mouth open. Okay? You get in more of the flavors and stuff with the mouth open and breathing in through the nose. Um, check out the legs, similar to wine. You can see, or at least I can see, uh, that this one really sticks to the glass. And the nice thing about this is it's not chill filtered. Most whiskeys say at 86 proof or less are going to be chill filtered. In my opinion, that takes a lot of flavor out of it. I know this is kind of what I call hot whiskey, it's high proof, but I drink it neat. It's the only way to drink it, in my opinion. Okay? Uh, the legs on the glass are sort of an indicator of what the mouthfeel is going to be like. We're talking about viscosity. You know, does it coat your mouth? I say, in my what words I, I think of is, is it chewier? I mean, your typical Knob Creek, which you can find almost anywhere for, say, less than 30 bucks, it's 100 proof, it's non chill filtered, it's a chewy whiskey. So is Booker's and a few others. So give it a sniff, keep your lips parted. What does it remind you of? I mean, think about it. what does this smell like? Like maybe burnt toast? <laughs> How about Christmas Eve when you're baking? If it's a scotch, it's going to smell like the seashore when the tide goes out. You know, because it's an island out there, it has a lot of salt water influence. And if it's an island, it's going to smell smoky. So. The other thing is you sort of pick apart what you smell. Is it like a, a bourbon typically is going to have a lot of caramel? You might get some oak or some leather. Back to scotches, smoke, iodine, marzipan, anybody. The list is endless, really, and it's all subjective. You smell what you smell. Doesn't make it right or wrong. Uh, there are no wrong answers. So the next thing is you relax. That is some good stuff. All right. <clears throat> different whiskey tasters will tell you to taste whiskey different ways. Some people will take it, excuse me, and I don't suggest gargling with it like some people do wine, but you can take the whiskey and coat your mouth with it. 
underneath your tongue, your cheeks, really get all the flavors that the whiskey has to offer. Um, some people just, you know, cross the tongue and that's it, and, and that's the taste and the flavors that they get. So then you want to look at this, or think about this, same way you did when you smelled it. What do you taste? Is it the same stuff that you smell? And after you have an initial taste, you may want to add a drop of water. And when I say drop, I mean drop of water. Or you can pour a little more in if it's particularly hot whiskey. I don't want to do that the first time because I'm going to smell the whiskey as it's supposed to be drunk. Or drunk. <laughs> but when you add the water, it'll open it up. You'll smell more typically. And a lot of times it'll change the flavor. Yeah, it's better without the water. <laughs> <laughs> so you go through the same smelling and tasting process. You use the water to open it up. Sometimes the water is just flat going to dilute it too much. Bottom line, whiskey tasting is not an exam. The greatest thing here is you just get to enjoy the whiskey. I'm done. <laughs>